Hello, welcome to Ludic Science. In this video, I will show you how to make a LED flasher using the CD4047 chip. This chip is similar to the 555 timer that I have used in other videos. It also produces a square wave train at its output, but there are some differences. This is a more modern chip it has CMOS technology, therefore the power consumption is very low. Also, in the CD4047, the duty cycle is always fixed to 50%. And in the 555, the duty cycle depends on the values of resistance and capacitance that you use. And also, you have a single output at the 555 timer, and in the 4047, you have three outputs at pins 10, 11, and 13. Pins 10 and 11 has outputs that are auto phase by 180 degrees. And pin 13 is the basic frequency, which is double the frequency of the other outputs at pins 10 and 11. Next time you need a PCB for your electronics project, consider using the professional services of JLC PCB. JLC PCB is the world leader in PCB fabrication. You can order online. You just need to register, upload your Gerber file, and wait a few days for your PCBs at an unbeatable price. Here is the circuit, it's very simple, you only need a capacitor and a potentiometer or fixed resistor in order to uh, fix your frequency. Using a potentiometer is better because you can change the frequency of the LEDs. And we connect three LEDs with its corresponding limiting resistor of 40, 470 ohms each to the outputs at pins 10, 11, and 13. As we mentioned before, pins 10 and 11 are reciprocal to each other. That is, when one of the LEDs is on, the other is off, and vice versa. And the LED at pin 13 flashes at double the frequency of the other two. Let's see the circuit working. Okay, here it is. The green and the red LEDs are connected to the outputs 10 and 11. So when one is on, the other is off and vice versa. And the blue LED flashes at double the frequency of the other two. It is connected at pin 13. Let me move the potentiometer to increase the frequency. And now let's see the outputs on the oscilloscope. Let me increase the frequency to better view the output on the oscilloscope. And there it is. These are pins 10 and 11. And as you can see, they are complementary. When one output is on, the other is off and vice versa. And also we can see that the duty cycle is 50%. That is half of the time we have the output high and the other 50% is low. And here I comparing the output of pin 13 with the output of pin 10. And we can see that indeed the frequency is double on pin 13 than the frequency at pin 10. Okay, so there you have it. I hope you liked this video. Thanks for visiting my channel and see you in the next one.